Okay, so now, moving on to Hellraiser 5, Blood, or Hellraiser 5 Inferno, which came out in 2000 and is directed by Scott Derrickson. After the commercial failure of Hellraiser 4, the rest of the franchise from 5 onwards went straight to DVD. And I believe it was Miramax or Dimension, I forgot when they merged with Dimension, picked up the franchise. <coughs> and this is where the movies, besides the last two, besides Revelations and Judgment, but Inferno, Hellseeker, Deader, and Hellworld, they were originally, they weren't Hellraiser scripts at first. Um, they were scripts for different movies, but I guess they didn't think they would work, so they tried to manage, they put Pinhead and the Cenobites in there, and put, slapped Hellraiser on the title to sell it, but anyways, let's get to it, um, this movie follows, um, a detective, who's played by Craig Ferg, or uh, Craig Ferg, Craig Schaefer, he was in another Clive Barker movie called uh, Nightbreed. He played the lead in that, and I thought he was really good in that one. He plays this detective that, um, <coughs> who's like very, <coughs> very shady and manipulative, and he's just a nasty, disgusting, vile person. Uh, he's solving these murders where they all have a connection to him. Like, the first guy he goes to, the first murder scene he goes to was a guy he used to bully in high school. And they find the Lamette configuration there, and also a child's finger. And at each subsequent crime scene, <clears throat> the person somehow related to Craig Schaefer's character, and... They keep finding a child's finger, so he's trying to figure out what's going on. Why is the killer, like, harassing him? And what, where is this child at? Um, uh, so, but I guess I can kind of, I'll kind of spoil the movie. I don't know if you've seen it, but there's a twist, and you find out that actually Craig Schaefer's character has been dead. I'm guessing he's dead. It kind of pulls like a Jacob ladder, Jacob's ladders ending, where you find out he's dead and he's reliving his personal hell. So like every day he's been reliving the same experience over and over again, <clears throat> solving this this crime, and you find out at the end who the child is, and then yeah, um. Um, this is my sec like I said, my second time viewing it, and I liked it better this time around. Um, uh, even though it's not really a, like a Hellraiser movie, there is sort of connection with Pinhead, which he's not really in it that much. He pops up at the end of the movie as like just telling Craig Schaefer's character what the hell's going on, and but there's also a reference to a character called the engineer who we think who was the killer in this movie and of course it's not the same engineer as in the original movie but it's still kind of a slight connection to the f original the franchise um <sighs> so one thing i liked about this movie was the character or that character that nick took uh, not, what's his name? uh was it? Oh, sorry. I think it's Nick Totoro. Um, yeah, Nicholas Totoro. He, uh, he's a comedian. Um, the last, the only movie I can kind of, I can think of of him right now, he played in The Longest Yard. He, the remake, uh, he was one of the inmates that turned out to be gay later on. He's in this movie and he plays, like, the, uh, Craig Sheffer's, um, 
partner, and he's like the really good one. Like he won't, he doesn't agree with anything Craig Schaefer, Schaefer, Schaefer is doing. And there's this one scene in the movie where Craig Schaefer, before he he went to a motel and did drugs and had sex with a prostitute, and then he went to work the next day and he gets a call, like a frantic call from her, saying that. This person was trying to kill her, and she dies over the phone. So he grabs Craig Schaefer's character, grabs Nick Totoro's character, and they go down to the apartment, and they want to make it look like they're trying to clear all evidence that Craig Schaefer's character was there. But afterwards, Nick Totoro's character feels really guilty about it, and he wants to go back to the department and tell them, you know, we what they did. And he said, you know, he's like, I know, like, you, you're you used to doing this kind of stuff. But he said, not me. I'm an honest man, this and that. And Craig Schaefer's character is like, you know, if you go and tell them, uh, you know, they're going to fuck you over, not me. Because, you know, I've been here longer. I've been here for like 10 years. You only been here for, what, two or three years? You know, who are they going to believe? And then he said, well, I, I've already, Craig Schaeffer's character's like, I already made up a plan anyways. And then, you know, Nick Tutor's character's like, I don't, I don't want to deal with you anymore, you know. I thought that was a great scene, or that was a great aspect to the story, and that was a good scene too. Um, yeah, Craig Schaeffer's character in this is such a douchebag, like, he has a wife and child, and he's just sitting there doing drugs, drinking excessively, and have, having sex with prostitutes, and dealing with these random pe shady people. There's, like, this one guy who is an ice cream truck driver who's, like, really shady, and uh, they have this conversation trying to get to the engineer. And he's like, well, I can't tell you because I'll get in trouble, this and that. And they get into a scuffle, and he finally admits, like, tells them a, a person that he can go see. And then later on, uh, he gets he gets sent this video, which I thought was kind of weird, like, until later on when you find out what's going on. Like, this kid delivers a video to Craig Schaefer's character, and he's, like, in a bar. And there's people around, and he puts the videotape in there when he's in the bar and starts watching it. And it's, it doesn't show you what's going on, but it shows you a man's feet. And he's like, and you see like bottom of a whip, and he's like, and you hear him beating someone. And you see like blood like spraying back and stuff. And like he turns the camera on himself, and it's the engineer. And he kind of looked like Venom a little bit, like when he sticks his tongue out, and it kind of made me laugh a little bit. But it didn't happen that much, so it's not a distraction. But then he turns the camera around onto the back of the ice cream truck driver, and it's like torn to shreds. Then we also get introduced to the Wired Twin Cenobites. And there's also a Cenobite that kind of looks like a uh, Chatterer, but it has, it's just a torso and arms and a head. And it's like really creepy what, how it moves, especially in the scene, like in the woods, when it's climbing up a tree, that would really creepy. There's also like this weird scene where Craig Schaefer's character goes to like this country western bar to meet up with the engineer. And there's this guy dressed up in a cowboy cowboy outfit and uh they get into like this argument and then he runs out into the middle of the woods Craig Schaefer and he gets chased by the Cenobites and then these two other people dressed uh, I guess they're cowgirls maybe dressed in cowgirl outfits go out there and they start beating them up like ninja style it was really weird and awkward but it didn't take away from the movie um but, I don't really want to get too much, I think I gave a lot away too much, but, um, there's not a real, that much gore effects in this movie, um, besides, like, that one little scene with the videotape and, like, the Cenobites, but other than that, it's not really that bloody of a movie. 
And like I said, Pinhead doesn't pop up until the end. But <coughs> it's a decent Hellraiser movie. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like Seven. Like the vibe and the nasty feel to it. And that they're trying to solve this serial killing crime. But anyways, that's my review.